All right, welcome back, everyone, to another Keeping It Real review. I'm your host, James, joined by Calvin and Reese today to talk about Nicolas Cage's new movie, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Uh, you've probably heard about this film. It's been very well uh, marketed. Of course, Nicolas Cage plays uh, sort of a fictionalised, exaggerated version of himself. He's sort of bordering retirement. He's not getting the roles he wants anymore. And then... Uh, along comes this offer to make an appearance at uh, sort of just like a party appearance, isn't it? In, in Mallorca, Spain for Pedro Pascal's Javi. And for a million dollars, that's why he goes. He needs to, he needs to pay off some hotel fees. I think he's up to like 600 grand in debt. And then once we get to Spain and that villa, the FBI get involved and it seems that Javi might not be the best guy, even though him and Nicolas Cage are really hitting it off. And this beautiful friendship has uh, started to start to blossom. It all might go downhill. Guys, what did we think of the unbearable weight of massive talent? Reese, you can go first. I loved it. What an absurd film. I saw the trailer of this ages ago. I've been waiting for it. For what felt the longest time, and um, when I finally sat down to watch it, oh, I was not disappointed. It's so great, it's so funny. Like, I just think it's great when Nick Cage can just be Nick Cage, and he can just go and be his weird self. The chemistry between him and Pedro Pascal was so good. Oh, I man, would watch. I'd so watch a good. I'd watch a buddy cop film with those two as the main characters. Mm. Yeah, like I'd watch another one of these. It's just give me more Nick and Harley. Like, I wasn't ex- I, I wasn't expecting the whole you know CIA, FBI, whatever it was thing mm. to get involved. I knew there was going to be something off about him, but when I got involved, I was at first I was like, ah, oh, that's kind of I don't know, I might ruin the film, but actually it did it really well, mm. and I really I really like Ike Barowitz. I think he's really funny. Who is it? Ike Barowitz? How you say his name? Baron Holtz. Baron Holtz. Yeah. Baron Holtz. <laughs> I was like, who are we talking about? Whatever. Close enough. <laughs> no, it was great. I, I loved it. I know it's not going to be for everyone. There's going to be something about that. I think it's probably... Well, it was definitely garbage. fucking for me, Reese. This but I loved it. I've seen, I've seen this movie twice now. I want to go again. I've... It, like, it is hilarious. Nick Cage is great. Pedro Pascal is fucking awesome. But I had such, like, a profound reaction to this movie... Where it's not just it's not just a comedy, and of course it works as a comedy, works as an action movie, sort of at times works like a spy film. Um, is it's really got a lot to it, which is a lot more than I expected. But it, what I got from this is it's just such this perfect love letter to all cinema, and of course we've had we've had movies about movies all the time, um. But this one sort of there's uh, an appreciation for all types of movies. Um, obviously, the characters are talking about what their favorite films are, and Pedro Pascal's movies are all so varied and what he loves. And Nick Cage is like, "What the how do, how does that connect?" And Pedro's like, "It's just how it makes me feel, man, and that's how I feel about movies." And I got emotional. And I was, "This is this movie's been made specifically fucking for me. I'm having such a great time." And like we'll talk, we'll talk about the end later. But that, that's what got me. And there's this relationship at the center of it between Nick Cage and his daughter, which I thought was a great through line. Um, yeah, and if, uh, what a better actor for this movie to there, there is no better actor for this movie to be about because who's done more genres than Nick Cage? You know what I mean? He's yeah, really I did, run, I did. really run the gamut. I did hear that. Did you see that thing where um, it was like if Nick Cage wasn't going to accept, they were going to get Christian Bale or Daniel Day Lewis to play Nick Cage? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, like, what? I don't think that that would have been that would have been very funny, I and I'd love to see either of them. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think this one would have worked if it was anyone. But else. I don't think Nick Cage. I can't see Nick Cage ever turning it down. I did see him in an interview say it was quite difficult to do because love it had a, some overlap with his own sort of life. You know, yeah. we all know about like him. His spending, uh, yeah. his crazy, what are you like buying dinosaur skulls and castles and stuff? Two headed snakes. Uh, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um, 
I really enjoyed this film as well, but mainly because, like you said, the relationship at the heart of it between Nick Cage and Javi was so, like, their chemistry was amazing. I, I really believed in their friendship. I obviously, like, the, you know, the plot's quite, like, predictable, you know, it's like, it makes you, it does a good job of making you guess if Javi is this, but you just know it's not that kind of film. <laughs> yeah. You know there's going to be a nice, like... I think I, you're I, hoping yeah, I did Downey isn't a bad yeah. guy. I did, I did find it really heartwarming that, like, uh, he's such... Like, Javi was such... The, like, the kind of friend someone like Nick Cage needs who's just mm. as weird as yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that the, the films they sort of celebrated weren't just, like, Nick Cage's sort of uh, recent critical acclaim films. I didn't even mention something like Pig. Um, I think they, this they, was probably like, being filmed I, before Pig came out. Was, oh, maybe, but like, yeah. I suppose. Like, but they didn't mention some of his other. Like, they didn't mention the films he won an Oscar for or anything like that. Um, and also, love as soon as he started talking to um, Sailor Ripley, who's his character from Wild at Heart. I was like, yes, they couldn't. Have, if if they were going to have Nick Cage be confronted with his past, you know, roles yeah. as himself, I, I couldn't. I couldn't pick a better character than a crazy David Lynch character who is the most in Nick Cage you will ever see Nick Cage just like shouting when he when he shouts when he's like I'm fucking like Nick Cage and he drags it out for about 50 (laughs) (laughs) and I also thought that was great because it's actually Nick Cage now playing that character from decades ago yeah, I love yeah. how it's this duality between because there there has always been this side to Nick Cage where he is that he is the movie star. He's very exaggerated, and it, it's you know it's all that screaming and doing a lot of repeating himself. Um, but then there is this this phenomenal actor inside him, and he's 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 all about character and telling stories, and it's it's that duality. And I think um, this movie sort of celebrates celebrates it all, like you know. Face Off is a ridiculous movie, but like Pedro Pascal's like it's my favorite movie, and I'm like yeah yeah, yeah man Fo- that's fucking followed great. By the ca- followed by the cabinet of Dr Caligari, which is so funny. And like that Paddington running into, that was a joke. Yeah yeah, 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 that was a great yeah. joke. Uh, <laughs> and I'm yeah, what a, the, no better movie for them to pick than Paddington I think it was, Two. I think it was great as well. I know I know it was kind of like for the jokes, but when Tiffany. Haddish and Ike Barinholtz having the conversation. Just you the, seen Croods too? Just the array of them. Yeah, like Croods too. And he's like, no, I'm a four year old man. I watch fucking Face Off. I can't air. <laughs> and it's just like, the guy, like he's just done so many different types of films. And like, I, I watched um, fucking Wally's Wonderland or whatever it is recently. Yeah. Uh, if you wanted to sit back and watch a Nick Cage film. Oh, what did chuck, I, I wanted to um... chuck it on? It's. It's just yeah, it's like Nick Cage game. Did you Nick see? Cage. Did you see Color Out of Space Race? No, I really want to. Uh, no, that's really that. good. He's good in um, Mum and Dad as well. Yeah, with, I didn't um, think that movie Selma. was great, but no, I, but he, of really course, good. he's yeah, yeah. And apparently, he's great in Mandy as well. I need to watch Mandy. I wa- I think I watched half of Mandy and I fell asleep, so I need to I need to go back and revisit it. Uh, Mandy does get a Mandy, shout out in this so. movie with it with a chainsaw. Yeah. yeah. But I am the big, the big, um, like weapon, like sword, spear thing that Javi has is from Mandy as well. Oh, it's like right. called the Beast. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's just oh. a massive chrome spear thing. We'll just, we'll just get right into spoilers. Um, I <laughs> that I love because uh, there is this sort of FBI plot where they believe Javi has kidnapped the. Is it the daughter of the? President, President of Catalonia. Of Catalonia, yeah. Um, and he thinks it, it, that they assume it's in this sort of underground bunker. And after a fucking great scene of them tripping on LSD, <laughs> which just I know that scene, me right? I know that scene was in the tra- I know that scene was in the trailer, right? It was so and much better. More, but it was still so funny to see it in the film. I think because of the context that they thought they were being chased by these by these <laughs> men. <laughs> Ordinary blokes. Do the fake laugh, but don't make it obvious. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Um, and he goes down into this bunker and it's this fucking massive sort of shrine 
to Nick Cage, and he's like, yeah, which is I, which is like, mad weird. Oh. <laughs> it's weird, but he's he was like, he doesn't he doesn't take it that way. He's like, he's like, oh shit, the, the, he's like, is it too much? No, <laughs> like, and then he's obviously it's in the trailer, but where he sees the um the statue of, of him. thing. Yeah, that was face off. Oh, was it? I thought it was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, too many, too many. Uh, <laughs> nice little national treasure poster. I I noticed as well as he goes in. Um, but yeah, this grotesque that statue. He calls it. How much he pay for it? Six grand. I'll give you twenty for it. <laughs> no, it's not for uh, sale. I also love. Cage. When they're trying to like figure out what they're gonna do, and Nicholas Cage is like, oh, "I'm not a good like climber, or not a good runner." He's like, "Yes, you are." I saw it in the in their like uh, whatever behind like, the scenes feature, footage, yeah. National yeah. Treasure too. Yeah, like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's just I'll that moment that. where they where they, they think they might have to kill each other, and they're just like, "Do you want to swap shoes?" Oh. Yeah, I was gonna say that. No, <laughs> why I love is that, that even? <laughs> because they can't. They, they over the. I, it's not very clear how many days he's been there. Maybe what three days, and there's this instant connection between them because they just share this profound love for for movies and storytelling. And you can you can really tell that Nick Cage really put his heart and soul into this performance. I think it's like obviously Pig is a phenomenal piece of work from him great performance one of his best but i this i feel is up there and of course it's a very different type of movie and performance but i think he really committed to it and it despite being a comedy there is so much heart and emotion to this funny little story i, I thought it was great i think this is i i would say i think this is pedro pascal's best performance i've seen he's him. seen yeah, stealing just, at times yeah, i was just looking through his filmography now and like he's not really been in like a lot and he's been in like a lot but nothing really like stands out other than obviously yeah, he didn't really he didn't really get big until he was in like game of thrones did he really like he didn't get like he was a bit later like, he's one of his actors yeah. he was a bit but later I, I know he's gonna be in like the last of us and all that but i think he needs to do more comedy stuff he's a really good he's very funny comedic in this. Actor. very very good i love how yeah so this you know it starts as this comedy, family drama. Then it sort of, you know, turns into a spy movie a bit. And then by the end, because of what it is and what it's trying to say about movies, and it turns into this ridiculous Nick Cage action movie where Pedro and Gabrielle? Yeah. Yeah? And stood in the middle of the street just firing these guns from the hip at the bad guys. And it's this, this swelling uh, score as the cars are flipping everywhere and then i thought it was a great way to end the movie by transitioning from what was actually happening into the movie that they ended up making yeah, together was really good. i thought that was they're very well done and i yeah uh, when, I it, when it like first happened nick cage like, in that oh, no, film. don't end but <laughs> i love how like nick cage in that film as well you could tell he looked so different because of like just movie maker like yeah, yeah. so much younger and everything yeah. Also, did you think at the end of the film when he meets Javi again? I just thought all the way through the film that the um, Pedro, it's, not, it's got nothing to do with the film. Pedro Pascal shouldn't have cut his hair. He looked way better with long hair. He did look way better with long hair. I also had that same thought. <laughs> Javi, what have you yeah. done? <laughs> yeah. And I thought, what? I, locks. I thought it was the perfect way to end this story because, of course, we, we start with the. Uh, his relationship with his daughter and his and his ex-wife, uh, played by Sharon Horgan, who I always love to see. I think she's great. And then it, it ends while he's because there is there's this point of the film where he's his daughter accuses him of trying to mold her into just like a little version of him. And on his perspective, he's like, no, I just wanted to share things with you that are important to me. And uh, it's very conflicting views. And at the end, there is that that moment of, you know, what, what movie do you want to watch? And she says Paddington 2. And I thought, oh, perfect, because obviously he's just had that experience with Harvey watching it for the first time. It's his favourite movie. I think one of my favourite lines in I, this I immediately, th I immediately thought you should probably watch Paddington. Just pa watch Paddington 1 first. But Paddington 2, but Paddington 2 is a masterpiece. And it's much better it than is, the first. It is a good it's film. It's so fucking good. But when Pedro uh, when says, is, when is um, when is when is when his grandmother turns up at the end, 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna start going again. Um, <laughs> I think what one of my favorite lines in this movie is when he, he says, like, you know, come on, man, stop stalling. What is your favorite movie or third favorite movie of all time? Is it Paddington 2? And he's like, what? And he's uh, what does he say? I cried through the entire thing. It made me want to be a better man. <laughs> I, oh, uh, I love that sounds that. like you in every film you've ever that seen. That is James. me coming out of every movie. <laughs> I, <laughs> this was me coming out of this. It, it, it really did hit me in such a way that I, I, it felt tailor-made for me because this is exactly how I feel when I come out of a... You know, I'll come out of an action movie and, and you know, it, you guys are like, that wasn't that great. Like, oh, but it, I got so fucking excited <laughs> and it made me feel things. So, yeah, I, I really felt like this movie was sort of saying that, um, which I'd, I, couldn't, I couldn't have loved more. Anything more to say on the unbearable weight of massive talent? Oh, I love the bit where he dressed up as that, like, mob boss, wherever he was. <laughs> oh, man, that was just... <laughs> My man, eh? It's just, it's just so <laughs> funny, like... I was thinking about it the other day. I, I need to see it again. I need to go see it again. Yeah, I think, I think I, I, I might. Story. I might go this weekend. I. Uh, oh damn! I was gonna go see The Northman tomorrow, but I. I might see this for a third time instead. I don't fucking know. They're both great. Great movies out this week. Well, the last two weeks anyway. Right, let's rate this. Calvin, you can go first. Uh, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Four out. I thought five. it was really great. Uh, I don't think it really reaches those sort of dizzying heights of a five-star film. Okay. Reese. Uh, uh, fuck it. I'm going to give it five stars. Fuck it. I was going to give it a four and a half. I was going to give it a four and a half, but nah, fuck it. God so damn it, fun. Reese. Uh, I was going to give it a 4.5, and I thought you guys were going to say that's too high, and now Reese has gone for a five. And no, I, feel like I, I love this as film. Much as he does. This film is great. Sorry. You could probably talk him down, James. Yeah, no, you Reese. Won't. You won't talk me down. Get him to at least a go, two. Go lower than I me. I love this film. <laughs> I love Nick Cage. Uh, yeah, I, I've always been a big fan of Nick Cage uh, since, I was, since I was a kid, so this it really... I think yeah, it uh, it affected me. I got emotional. I I laughed. I cried. I had the best time. So I I couldn't recommend this film anymore. I'm gonna give it a four point five out of five. It's one of my favorite movies of the year so far. It it might stay there. It it just felt so tailor made for me, and I I loved it. Right, guys, that is it for our review of The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. If you're listening on YouTube, then let us know down below in the comments what you thought of the movie. Tell us your favourite Nick Cage movie as well. I was just about to say that. Yeah. What is everyone's favourite Nick Cage movie, by the way? Nick Cage is one of my... He's in one of my top guilty pleasure movies. Go on. Which is the movie Knowing. Have you ever seen that? I have. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I, I, I like that as well. It's like... It, it's quite good. I think at the end, kind of like... Ruins it a little bit for me, but I think before that, it's just such a good concept for a movie. Have you have you not seen Knowing James? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. oh no, you have the plane crash, but it is oh, mm. it's really it's yeah, it's really really harrowing. Crazy. Whoa, <laughs> uh, Calvin, what's your favorite Nick Cage movie? Oh God, I didn't know I was gonna be put on the spot. Uh, so I'm gonna go with. I mean, I love like all of his action things, like Con- like Con Air and The Rock and stuff. Yeah. But then I do love. I I go with. I'm gonna go with Wilder Heart because he delivers one of his crazy. But like Nicolas Cage, and Willem Dafoe in a David Lynch film. How how crazy could you get than that? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, Raising Arizona. That movie, I I fucking adore that film. I might watch it tonight. Actually, saying that. Uh, right, guys. Yeah, uh, where was I up to? invite outro if you're listening on another streaming platform then rate like follow really helps us out and until next time oh i should say by the way we've also got a couple more videos out this week we've got a review for the northman out and uh, a trailer reaction for jurassic world dominion and we are starting a sort of a different version of a podcast next week where it's not just all movies all the time so we hope you can uh, we hope to see you 
what the fuck am I saying? <laughs> we hope you listened to that. And until next time, <laughs> keep it real. Thank <laughs> you.